you want to serve as a state representative for House District 11? Uh, about four or five years ago, uh, I was running for school board, and my pa the pastor of my church uh, said to me, Brother Danny, you really need to be running for the House of Representatives. And my wife and I began to pray about that, but the former uh, representative for, uh, for this district, he and I work at Eagle Bank, both of us work there, and uh, I did not feel like it was prudent for me to it's run something. against him both of us working in, in the same building. But I, I have served Coleman County uh, as a teacher, as a principal, as career tech director, and as a school board member uh, over the past 40 years. I came here in, in 1972 to do an internship, and I've been somewhat affiliated with Coleman County Schools ever since that time. So as uh, this uh, see, it came open. My wife and I began to pray about it, and I asked our pastor, my pastor, and, and asked uh, the deacons at our church to help me pray about this. And uh, I have been uh, serving uh, Coleman County Schools, and I feel like that we have, I have gained some partnerships with people in this room, the chamber, and and others, those in in business, and those. In industry, I work with farmers all these years, taught students in agribusiness, and I think I'm privileged to live in a state where we can have this kind of representation uh, voted on by the people, and we have the opportunity to vote on those representatives. Servitude has been in my on my life, in my life since I was. 16 years old. I was raised by a mother and father that taught me to love your neighbor as yourself. And my neighbor has been as far as Hurricane Katrina to Florence to Ice Storms to the fire service. So serving has been in my, as part of my life and serving people. I look at this as an extension of servanthood to serve, to serve people. Right now in Alabama we have an opportunity to change some things in a positive way for the state of Alabama and for Coleman and Morgan and Blunt County. And I feel like I can share in that and I can help get that done. Another thing, the reason why I would like to run for House of Representatives is because I really believe that I have a lot to offer in a lot of categories. I believe that I have some experience with those people in office to work side by side and hand in hand with them to accomplish these goals. Thank you. First of all, I want to say the hardest thing about this campaign has been talking about yourself. And that's been hard for me. This is a multi-dimensional district, District 11, and I feel like I'm a multi-dimensional candidate for this position. And I think I'm uniquely qualified. I'm a true conservative, and uh, I have been a conservative all my life, and this is a conservative district. I'm a woman. That makes me uniquely qualified for this position, and we need more women in our state legislature. I'm the only candidate in the Republican primary that's from the world of business, the real world. I have built coalitions and I have created jobs from nothing but a dream or an idea. I understand that government doesn't come from handouts or stimulus. The government doesn't create jobs from handouts or stimuluses or grants or projects that people create jobs. As a medical provider, I am fully aware of the health care crisis, Medicare, Medicaid issues facing our citizens and our senior citizens. I have been involved with education from the vocational high school level all the way through the junior college level, and I'm a very strong supporter of the junior college system. And finally, as a farming partner, I am the only advocate for the number one 
industry in District 11, which is agriculture, and it's the number one industry in the state of Alabama. Agriculture and a nation's ability to feed and clothe itself is a matter of uh, homeland security. I'm Randall Shedd, and uh, I've truly been blessed. I've been blessed with my faith, and I'm thankful for that. Uh, I've been blessed with family, been blessed with freedom living in America. You know, we've got a lot to be thankful for in that regard. And I've been blessed with friends. I want to give back to the reason I'm running. Uh, it, it's an opportunity for me to give back to my community, to my state, um, and, and help uh, make a positive difference in this state. There's some things, there's some, some very specific things that I want to do as, a, as District 11 representative and representative for the community. One, I want to help get state spending under control. I want to protect the uh, senior citizens of our community and our state. I want to uh, protect, help protect the right to bear arms. I want to promote pro-growth policies in the legislature. And I want to stay focused on local projects by the state. Uh, you know, I've, I've seen that happen uh, many times, I think, in, in representation in Montgomery. Uh, you go, I've seen people go to Montgomery and get uh, all embroiled in some kind of uh, issue that really didn't have an, an impact on the folks back home. And state projects have a true impact in our community, and I want to be uh, a positive part in getting these uh, projects the states working on and should be working on in our community. We, uh, I think, need a representative that um, uh, can help us make sure that we get our fair share in our community. This session is going to almost be over when uh, when this election is settled. So uh, we've got we got to get the ground running when it's over. So thank you. The general fund budget presents the greatest challenge for the legislature coming into the 2013 session today. After trimming ways to make the necessary cuts to that budget. Would you give consideration to a tax increase or a new tax to support the sub-services covered in the general budget? Please tell us why. That's, thank you for that question. I would not be in favor of tax increases at all. Because I think if we do a better job in Montgomery with our spending and where our money is going, we should have to raise taxes. <coughs> Well, if you get your own house in order, then you shouldn't have to worry about raising taxes. So I would I would be opposed to raising any taxes now. Thank you. Well, number one, the state legislature should have to address the budget and get that settled right from the get-go. There is no excuse for the state legislature to wait to the 11th hour of the last day to try to pass a state budget. Then, prior year budgeting is what we should be trying to do. Uh, you've got sales tax. We can't run our household on what we think cows are gonna sell for or what we think soybeans are gonna sell for two years from now. Prior year budgeting would keep us out a lot out of probation. And I will not support any tax increase, especially any temp attempt to return to increase in property taxes, the abol uh, abolition of current use on agriculture. I will not stand and I will oppose any attempt to fund state government on the backs of increased property taxes. Uh, Inside Alabama Politics is a publication that I read often as I can, and uh, this last one uh, it, it talked about the general fund, and it is a serious problem. It's something that we will have to address, and uh, of course, as I mentioned, we this representation of uh, District 11 will be late getting there in this particular session, but we really, in my judgment, have to uh, address spending problems, not tax increases, and also pro-growth policies to grow our economy. I really, really believe that because I've been seeing it for many, many years in, in uh, the uh, positions that I've served as Chairman of the County Commission. 
uh, four terms as mayor of Fairview and, and uh, my involvement as director of commission on aging. So I, I just, uh, I understand, you know, we've got this thing of $437 million borrowed from the Alabama Trust Fund, $162 million borrowed from the Rainy Day Fund, uh, all this money that we're spending. But I, I, I really see, and I've seen in Montgomery, uh, the many times that I've been there, state agencies, folks, we have layers and layers and layers of government and bureaucracy that still has to be cut. And I commend the leadership and the current uh, group uh, that is working. Uh, they've got a, the Republican caucus has a, a, a series of bills that's being introduced today. Uh, the Red Tape Reduction Act is one of my favorites because small businesses, small towns, and all size towns and, and cities, uh, small businesses and large businesses, the, uh, the uh, bureaucracy and the paperwork that's involved this day and time is just unreal. As a matter of fact, they've got it into us candidates now. We're having to file paperwork with the government weekly, you know. So it's, uh, this, this federal government and even some in the state government folks is out of control. We've got to reel it back in. I understand there are about 160 or 70 different departments in Montgomery. And there are dozens of those that are duplicated services. In other words, they're, they're different layers uh, and, and they're doing the same thing. They're just doing it by duplicating services. Different agencies do the same thing. And I think we need to, uh, to eliminate some of those duplicated services and that, therefore streamline the uh, revenue that is that in our state, and I would be opposed to any, any tax increases. Uh, I, I just am opposed to that, and, and, and I think we can maybe reach this goal. And I understand that the general fund is it, there's a problem there, but I also understand that I think if we could, to, could do away with some of the duplication of services, uh, that we could uh, would have more revenue flowing uh, to our uh, local governments and. and I have a follow-up question for each of you concerning the budget that I made, and each of you will take about one minute to answer it, and we'll go back to the same order if that's okay. Uh, I know each of you expressed no desire for a tax increase or, or a new tax, but Alabama is one of a handful of states that still has separate budgets, one for education, one for everything else. Would you seriously look at merging those budgets together and trying to get the best for the money we have to get it where it's needed each year? Do you have any comment about that? I'd be opposed to combining the budgets <coughs> because if we don't keep our education set aside, then we, we could be hurting our children and our college careers. Uh, that discussion said it comes to a point where you don't have money in the general fund to fund. Uh, the resources for the state, but it goes back to what I said earlier, we take care of our own house and clean it up, and we shouldn't have to worry about going into the Education Trust Fund to, to help fund the general fund budget. I, too, would be opposed to merging the two budgets, uh, and just simply for the sake that I would not want uh, the Education Trust Fund in any way compromised jeopardized, uh, borrowed from, uh, diminished in any shape, form, and f or fashion. And, uh, you know, most organizations, even like our little church, uh, we, we maintain separate accounts, uh, separate budgets for different departments, and, and I just can't see taking a step back on that. I would be opposed to uh, combining the budgets. You know, we have some wonderful schools in District 11. Uh, the uh, city school system, Coleman County uh, school system, uh, Eva School in our district, and the uh, Blount County school system, Cleveland and, and Pennington. So, you know, I, we, we don't want to take away from those good schools because, quite frankly, uh, there there are needs that are still there that they uh, that they that would be helpful for additional funding to come. To them. We don't want to lose uh, the funding that they have. And if I didn't make it clear a while ago, I, I don't think I finally said, but I am opposed to any taxes. And as Mayor of Fairview, we voted to lower taxes at Fairview. We 
we had a we had a tax that I just felt wasn't fair. He claimed we actually repealed that tax. So um, I like the idea of having the lowest taxes in the nation, and I just think we need to manage it better. I, I too am opposed to uh, combining the budgets. Uh, one reason uh, I realized the prison system is paid out of the general fund, and I, you know I, I I think if we can educate our children in, in such a way, we can improve our education, graduation rate, uh, less uh, reduce the dropout rate, and then I believe our prisons will have uh, less population there, and I really believe that. Uh, I'm really opposed to removing uh, that education trust fund budget, especially if, if you saw some of that money going into the prison system. Thank you. All right, next question. Uh, with the legislative session beginning today, there's a lot of proposed legislation from all across the state being discussed in the news. Uh, Tell us about a specific issue or a piece of legislation that you would like to propose if elected. I would think one of the biggest crises that is facing Alabama, and it'll be one of the major topics in Montgomery, is going to be the health care issue, the health care crisis. Um, Governor Bentley and uh, the state legislature did not sign on to the Affordable Health Care Act, and uh, there's about 17 other states that would not sign on to this, and uh, as um, different agencies and different proactive groups are teasing through this Affordable Health Care Act, and it's 3,000 pages, and they're seeing the, um, the mandates that are coming down and how the common person is going to be damaged by this, the IRS alone has estimated that in three years, the average health care insurance cost for the average family of four to five will be $20,000. So I, specifically any legislation, I have not you know, thought about preparing anything like that, but I think we have to be on heightened awareness. We have to protect our senior citizens. Medicare is being slashed. Medicaid, the dollars are going to be debated, uh, coming and going. It's going to be one of the biggest topics in our state legislature this 2013 uh, session. Well, again, I am really uh, pleased with the uh, Republican caucuses uh, uh, bills and the, the agenda that they have. And, and, and when I say that, we have to understand they need to be debated. Uh, we want to make sure as those bills are introduced, I think, that uh, that the, there's good debate so that there are any flaws in them, that those flaws are corrected with amendments or whatever uh, to address uh, anything that might create some unintended consequences of that legislation. We want to correct it before it's signed with the governor instead of after it's signed with the governor, and that's a good thing with debate. Um, I really like uh, the, the agenda that they uh, that they have. There's, there's there's one or two that's going to make it to us my position and, and may need to be addressed, uh, and, and I understand that. But the one thing that I want to focus on uh, that, that I would say if I had to uh, that I would introduce is try to make sure that our seniors don't come up short in addressing this Medicaid problem, because I see seniors every day uh, at the Commission on Aging who. Uh, who have a difficult time enough without uh, having uh, problems about Medicaid. It's just a real serious problem with our senior population, with some uh, segments of our senior population. So I would want to try to come up with something that protects our seniors if it is, as Medicaid is being addressed. I also am concerned about our seniors and Medicaid, and I understand Medicaid is under the, kind of under the gun, it's, it's, it's a, there's a problem there uh, financially. My, my mother is a patient in a nursing home. We kept her at home as long as we could. Uh, and, and we're paying private pay because she had a <coughs> insurance policy. But I'll tell you, uh, from the, the finances, the, the financial burden that, that the, medic, uh, the uh, 
nursing home situation, it's, it's tough. It's tough. And that, that uh, Medicaid is, is uh, necessary in our seniors. But I would, I would like to see some legislation. Don't know how that would work. Don't know exactly what we could do. Uh, but to limit uh, those uh, younger people, especially some of those who can work, uh, uh, from getting on the Medicaid payroll. As I've been out traveling and, and campaigning for this election, the biggest cry I hear from people is federal government intrusion in Alabama in our lives. And I have an answer for that, I think. I think if Alabama will get its own settlement order and take care of its 10th member of the state, we shouldn't have to worry too much about federal government intrusion. I would be interested in supporting legislation to cover a lot of those things we talk about on a daily basis that our state should address and take care of. I, I'm fixing to go out here, but I'm gonna tell you, Sandy Hook was a, was a terrible thing when those young kids were, were killed up there. But every day, thousands of unborn children are dying. We have yet to address that as a state. We just wanna sit back and let it go. Mississippi has got a strong regulation of abortion clinics in the state of Mississippi. I think it's time Alabama steps up to play and regulates ours. Thank you. Okay. Next question. The move is afoot to further regulate gun ownership with better background checks and to place limits on the size of ammunition clips. Do you favor any of these proposals at one? Let me tell you, um, gun ownership uh, in our country it is the backbone of protecting ourselves. It's the backbone of protecting our families. Uh, it could be, uh, again, at some point in the future, the, uh, the way that we protect our country. So I just don't think we need to change uh, uh, any, anything that, uh, that deals with uh, the Second Amendment rights that we have, the right to, to own and uh, bear arms. Uh, gun ownership is important to all of us, and, um, and I, I, don't, I don't want to see changes in it. I, I am opposed to restricting uh, the ownership and, and uh, operation of firearms. Uh, I understand. I've been in the school business a lot of years, and I understand there are problems there. I mean, not problems in our schools, but problems with, with security. I, I am opposed also to putting armed guard around our schools. Uh, I would be fully supportive of having uh, the school resource officer on every campus. I don't know how we fund that right now, but that's one of the things that I'd like to see happen on every campus. I'd like to have a school resource officer. Not because he's got a gun strap to his side, but because he builds relationships with those kids. And I've been in schools where the school resource officer came in and he would tell me as principal that I got a call from one of your students over the weekend where there was a domestic issue and they told me about that. So I, I'm in favor of, of uh, School resource officers. I am opposed to doing anything with our uh, right to bear arms. It is a fundamental right for American citizens to, to bear arms, and I fully support that right. I'm in favor of the Second Amendment for the right to bear arms. As a responder, in the last for years I've been threatened to be shot twice, face to face, as a responder. That concerns me because your responders now are concerned about, about their lives and what their families have to deal with. I believe we should take measures to make sure somebody is not mentally capable of having that weapon or the person is a criminal we ought to take steps to make sure that they don't get in their hands. If you look at the, fast, fast, the past few cases of all that has happened, 
is come from somebody mentally disturbed. So I think we need some type of system that would be fair that if, if law enforcement come across a situation like that, they could remove that person's arms until they were evaluated. Thank you. Ten years ago, October, um, and some of you may remember this, uh, someone tried, I was jogging behind the hospital at lunch, and somebody tried to force me into a car at gunpoint. And I, I fought the gun, and I fought the person because I knew the gun. I knew what it was. It was a 16-gauge automatic shotgun, and I knew what it could do if I took off running. Assault weapon bans haven't worked. Ammunition limitations did work for a while until the internet. People could order ammunition over the internet. I don't trust the 23 executive orders that Obama has come out with. I don't trust the federal government that wants to take our guns away. Not right now. So I cannot support any legislation that would just inch by inch by inch. I can't see a reason to have a 50 caliber something, but I can't see taking that away. But we have to look at the White House mindset. This is the same White House that last week gave $1.5 billion of money to Egypt. They've given them 200 <coughs> Abrams tanks to line up on the border with Israel, and they're giving them F-16 fighters. I don't trust the federal government and their mandates to take away our weapons. That's just the way I feel right now. I have, I have a quick follow-up on that. I want to clarify I wasn't challenging the Second Amendment. <laughs> but uh, a couple of specific things, and I'll narrow it back to one if you guys take maybe another minute and explain to you some of that just then. But the size of these clips for these soft <coughs> where you get 30, 50 rounds. Do you have any ideas about limiting that, which has been done before, it's being proposed again to come down to say 10 rounds? I, I don't think we're going to see anything like that happen in Alabama. Uh, you know, and and um, I, I just don't think it's going to make it through the process. And, and I don't want to, you know, I'm certainly not going to be uh, uh, pushing for that. Uh, I want to focus on the other things that we, that we can accomplish. <laughs> Be my and, and, and you know, back to my thinking on, on gun laws is, uh, it, as I say on my website, um, if we uh, if we outlaw guns, then only outlaws have them. And uh, they used uh, airplanes, jet airplanes, for weapons on 9 11. We can't outlaw them. You know, they're going to find something to, uh, to, to use for harm. You know, I, I sympathize in these um, cases where there's uh, been uh, violence at schools and situations like that. I sympathize with that. But I don't, I don't believe any number of measures that limit the clips or anything else is going to keep people from doing violence when they set in their uh, crooked mind to do violence. And I'm, I'm opposed to limiting anything uh, and as far as uh, clip size, because, you know, one of the reasons that we have the Second Amendment, the Second Amendment is to stand up against the tyrannical government. And I'm opposed to reducing anything that would uh, allow a man to protect his own home. I'm also opposed to changing clip size, or, <clears throat> excuse me, anything like that. Columbine High School happened when the, the assault panel rifles was on and the clip size were all changed and it didn't stop Columbine. So I am opposed to changing the clip size. I think Alabama right now has, has a, good, a good law in place and uh, maybe it just needs a little bit of tweaking. Thank you. Well, the cows are out of the gate. The cows are out of the gate, so there's no reason to try to shut the gate now. And I think we all agree that, uh, you know, there's just, 
you know, person-to-person uh, -person transfer, person-to-person -person sales <coughs> and ammunition, uh, uh, ordering things over the internet. Uh, we just can't allow the, the bad guys to have the weapons and the ammunition and uh, law-abiding citizens be restricted and, and be suppressed in ways and means that they can defend themselves, their homes, and their family. And again, it's a matter of...